The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 19th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve E. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. You can always send me an email. Now you send that to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be so kind to put radio show question. And of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, I got all the U.S. indices in the green. The Dow is up uh, 74 points, S&P 8. NASDAQ 127. Russell's up 3. Semi's up 15. Trend is up 210. They're the big mover and shaker out there. Up 1 and 6 tenths percent. You've got gold trading out at 1682. Silver at 1946. Lights recruit around 8465. Natural gas 777. Third year treasury is down 7 ticks. She's trading at 131.13. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside, you've got United Rentals up nearly 3% or 8 bucks. Wix.com is up 8 bucks and 11%. Innovative industrial properties up eight bucks or eight percent, eight and a half percent. BlackRock is up seven bucks and change, a little over one percent. Restoration hardware is up two and a half percent. That's trading out at two sixty four oh four. The Shakers, that's AutoZone off forty five bucks. AMT Digital down fifteen. Moderna is off eleven. Biontech is up about ten. Regeneron is off about nine. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. But to begin our show, what do we want to go take a look at? No questions that I've got inside the queue at the moment. So let's go take a look at uh, what's going on inside the daily equity future contracts out here. Uh, let's go to this panel. Here, what we've got now, what I'll just simply expand it out because there's really a couple of different potential patterns. So the one pattern that's out here, let's do this one at a time, make it clean it up, make it a little bit easier. So the original, which is still in place, A to B equals CD pattern look like this. Your A point was out here on the trading day. This is the daily chart we're looking at for the ES Mini, August the 16th. The B point was down here at the low on August 24th. Your C point, that retracement, that B to C retracement was 48% retracement. You do less than a 0.618 odds favor, you can do more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals C D to the downside. In this case here, it did a 1 to 1.272, formed a bullish amber candle on September 1st. Came back and reconfirmed that by the D point with a bullish engulfing candle on September 7th. That set up that the resistance level was the low of the bullish engulfing or the bullish or the candles that it engulfed happened to be that same candle on September 7th. That low was 3,900 even Stephen. Price closed below that on Friday. That negated that signal. However, it produced a bullish hammer candle. So now you have the 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out here. So that's one pattern that is for sure. But because price did close below, the uh, uh, September 7th swing point out there, there is the potential, and I would say more likely than not, if we see an additional close, well, if we see a close below Friday's low, that's that bullish hammer candle, that price point, write this down, 38.53. If there's a close below that, then odds favor that the actual A to B equals CD pattern that's in place is a larger one. And that would look like this. That's where the uh, B point is going to be the original D point of the bullish and golfing candle from September 7th. And the C point is going to be that move up into the uh, Fed day. 
And then you've got your A to B equals C. Now, this was a 61.8% retracement. The exact number was 61.69%. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection here would get us down to 37.29. But do notice how price came off that C point. Wide-ranging bar. We're below the daily profile. So odds would favor here and price along the strong side or the left side of that C to D leg. The angle of A to B is exactly the same as the angle of C to D. If you don't do that, then you're shortchanging yourself with regard to the way the market communicates to us. So more likely than not, if we see a close below Friday's session out there, we're likely going to see a move down to the 3608 area, not just 3729. That is not the current message because we do have an active A to B equals CD or buy the D point pattern or Gartley buy pattern, however you want to look at it. Now, we have that same situation going on here with the NQ. I'm just going to leave these A to B equals CDs in place out here. don't need to redraw them, but the small one you can see. Uh, and the small one you can see because on the left-hand side, you'll see those price projection levels. This also got down to the 1.272 area. This also had a bullish hammer candle on September 1st, bullish engulfing on September 7th, a close on Friday below 11,996.50. Negated those by the D point patterns, but generated a new one because you got a bullish hammer candle on Friday. You've got a bullish hammer candle as we speak right now in the daily. It's only 11.12 in the morning. So that doesn't really matter. You only need one bullish engulfing candle. So if this is just simply a buy the D point with a bit of a counter trend move here, we will go ahead now and remove those A to B equals CD levels out here or the uh, patterns. Then more likely than not, there's two areas where a counter trend move would take you to inside the NQ. The first one would be 12,126, the bottom of the current profile. This is a bullish structured profile. If price is able to overcome that, then a real counter trend move would take us above 12 would take us up to the 12 386 level that's the center of that bullish structured profile so you've got the valid gartley buy or buy the d point patterns out there when it comes to a to b equals cd folklore language out here you've got that same pattern going on inside the dow's december equity future contract the one-to-one -one completed a nice bullish engulfing candle that was the only did not have a hammer candle to confirm on september 1st but it did get that bullish engulfing candle on september 7th led to a, a four-day rally out there, then we had the Fed move lower. Again, you had that taken out on Friday, that being the September 7th low, but a bullish hammer candle formed on Friday as well. So you still have an active buy the D point pattern. If uh, price closes below that low, that low is 36.36, then the larger A to B equals CD pattern is likely going to form. And that gives you the one to one price projection in the 29.537 area. The one to 1.272 is out at the uh, 28.652 level. We take a look at the Russell 2000. So this is kind of interesting out here. The Russell 2000 only has one A to B equals CD pattern that's in place out here. In fact, let me just simply delete these. We'll come back. We'll draw them back in. Really, it's just the one. And the one that I'm referring to is where the high formed on August the 16th. The B point looks like it was the low of August 22nd. The C point, the high of August 26th. Oops, that didn't work out real well. Let's try that again, Stevie. Pay attention. Of course, I'm referring to myself, paying attention. There we go. Now we got the A point. Now we've got the B point. Now we've got the C point. You'll see the one to one. It was one to 1.618. It was confirmed with this bullish engulfing candle. Price did not close below that on Friday. So this still, the Russell 2000 being this, still has the active, the original, by the D point pattern. And here, the price is inside its daily profile. Closed just below it on Friday, back inside it today. Boy, we've got some interesting messages of the markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be back in just a few to continue looking at these markets. Be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in, so why don't we get to those? First one coming in from Dan in the Tiger's Den. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol VERU. Let's change our screens out here in a uh, moment. Uh, we'll look at these white background screens. Dan's question is, VERU is collapsing. Where would your chart suggest a high-risk trade for a wicked bounce out there? So first, as we take a look at VERU, VERU is the uh, ticker symbol. Dan, it's looking like it's trying to take out the B point of an A to B equals CD. Now, it would be the low from the trading day of September 7th. September 7th, the pretty key low. We took a look at the equity futures charts. Those were the days that we saw that uh, bullish engulfing candle and a bit of a bounce out there. Now, I, my recollection is I took a look on the other set of charts out here. Yeah, there was high volume on that trading day. That trading day being September 7th, 28 million shares. Today, so far, you're at about 6 million shares. So it doesn't look like it will have the volume. But nonetheless, Dan, if price were to close below that low, the low of September 7th, that low is at 1075, that's going to generate an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern, whether it's confirmed with volume or not. So that's the first thing that sticks out at me. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart shows us what? Well, one, it shows us that we're well below the bottom of its weekly profile. We're below its green oscillator and change line. So that suggests lower price. Now, the low, the lower price area here, if we get that A to B equals CD on the daily time frame, again, volume or not, then price may be telling us in Viru that it wants to pull all the way back to its breakout level. And we take a look at that wide ranging bar with volume. I would assume the volume on that trading week was 808 million. So definitely with volume is price coming all the way to the to that breakout level. And that means you can get all the way down to where it formed that seventh wave bottom back on the low of the week of April the 8th out there. And that's at about 434. Now, that's not the high risk trade that I think you're looking at. But the patterns as we speak right now may be suggesting that it depends upon the close. Perhaps this uh, low from September 7th will hold. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, price right now is below its oscillator and change on 1117. So everything here is pointing to lower price. So if I just go take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart for you, let's pull that up here, just to look for you're looking for some type of high risk uh, entry, we need to see some type of at least bottoming pattern or signal. 
And I would, at this stage here, if I look at the 30 minute chart, I don't have a suddenly full multi time frame set of charts out there, but on a 30 minute basis, we don't see such a pattern as we speak. We're in bar number four, you've got a wide ranging bar. It's taking out a road symptom indicator bottom that formed out here at 2.30, 3.30 in the afternoon on September the 7th. There's your September 7th level. So it closed below 10.75 and you see no bottoming signal here on a 30 minute chart. So it does look like it wants to take that out. Will it take that low out by the end of the day? That I don't know. But I don't see that uh, pattern set up for you to take that high risk trade as we speak right now. And it does look like at this moment that Viru wants to head much, much, much lower. So I hope that helps you out. It probably doesn't, but it is the, uh, it's the best Stevie can do out there. So thank you very much for the request. The next request coming in from Duncan Steve. And Duncan Steve wants to take a look at ticker symbol FTNT. So let's get that punched up on our screen. That is Fortnet. And Steve's question goes on to read like this. Hi, can you analyze Fortnet? We up. Might it eventually fill that August 3rd gap from uh, 60 low is 50-ish here? 60 low, three, uh, August 3 gap, August 3rd gap from 60. Um, okay, well, let me take a look at uh, Fortinet, see what it is that we have here. So in looking for a bottom, this actually formed a TD9 count bottom. The bottom came in on the trading day. It wasn't the low of the, the pattern out here. Well, the low of the TD9 count pattern. That was on the trading day of August the 30th. That low out there was 48.31. There was never a close below that. So that's a bottoming signal. Price makes a nice rally. One day above its TD9 count breakdown here, and then the next day right back below. So it never broke that out. Now, you're trading inside the profile. It's a daily profile. Counter trend moves would find support at 49.94. In essence, that's what it's done. So it is signaling to you and I that the move to the downside, Duncan Steve, may be over. The confirmation of that, or a confirmation of that, would certainly be one, one confirmation would be a close about 50.80, back above the top of its daily profile. So if you get that, what you might see is that Friday or to this morning, that low may be the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. We don't know, but we're right now surmising that is the possibility out here. If I look at a weekly time frame chart, it looks like it was a three drive to a bottom pattern, never confirmed with a bullish reversal candle. Um, you're asking about a gap. If I look at the weekly chart out there, just curious, is there some type of weekly gap that really sticks out at me? Not really. Um, and price came back to its uh, breakout level. You did get a close blow. I don't have a real clear reading on the weekly. The clear reading on the weekly is that's 53.24 thereabouts is your real resistance level. That's at red oscillator and change line. So any move, you'd want to see price clear that, close above it on a weekly basis out here. The monthly chart. So it's a road momentum indicator top, and right now just a consolidation with inside this monthly profile that is between the range of 48.74 to 71.15. Might it eventually fill the August 3rd gap? Let me get on my other chart. Oh, so you're to the upside. Okay, it just takes Stevie just a little while to figure that out. So the gap that he's referring to, Stevie from Duncan, is uh, this gap in here. So between that and this. So might it fill that gap? Well, um, yeah, it might. So uh, you may have the C point of an A to B equal C to the upside. Again, 53.24. It's really going to be the red oscillator change on a weekly basis that you're going to be paying attention to out here. That'll be that key level of resistance that would answer that question for you. If price did close above that, then it adds to the idea that that's a likely outcome. And then the confirmation is going to be a close above that uh, high from uh, September the 12th. That was at 55.94. Your preference Stevie, is to uh, get a close above that with more than 7.3 million shares. If you get that, then the answer to your question, or at least the charts will be answering that question for you, which is yes, price is going to go and uh, make an A to B equal CD and fill that gap out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, request. Much appreciated. Let me take a quick peek here at the uh, phone email. And LB writes in. He says, good morning, Steve. Could you please give me your current thoughts on URA? Absolutely. So let's get that punched up on our screen out here. URA, that's a uranium ETF out here. Uh, I think it is one of uh, LB's favorites. Uh, the question goes on. It says, I'm still holding through this consolidation. I'm wondering if you see anything new happening here. So let's take a look at URA. So we take a look at URA. Uh, right now, price is, um, I have no pattern here. Even if there's an A to B equal CD to downside, what you would need is a bullish reversal candle. So here would be the A to B point. 
and I've just simply copied, I'm just going to move this over. That would be your C to D. You can see we've exceeded the one-to-one -one level, so we know we've got a potential for an A to B equals C D pattern. That Friday session was a gap to the downside, so that's a bearish signal. So you really need, even though it's green, it does not mean it's a bullish reversal candle. As we look at the weekly time frame right now, what price is doing is it's testing its red oscillator and change line. Your preference, because you're still holding, is to see price continue to close above that level, 21.32. Why, Stevie? A red oscillator and change line tells us that the price oscillator is below zero. In order to get to really a bearish directional signal, if price closes below on a weekly basis, that red oscillator and change line, that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish signals out here. Still some sideways movement. I'd be watching 2132. You've got no bottom signal on a daily time frame. Price could be headed lower out there, lower to where. I don't, uh, other than just identifying the uh, gap that formed on August 23rd to the 24th, that would be the area to be looking. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, right now, we've got uh, most of the U.S. equities trading to the downside. The trend is out of the one to the upside, 179 points there. Uh, Dow's off 25, S&P's down 6, NASDAQ 126 points to the downside. Again, we're going to be watching the lows of uh, last Friday. You know, the S&P uh, and, and the Dow both formed on their cash indices, also formed uh, hammer candles. So you get closer below those lows, then the signal is uh, lower price out there. Otherwise, you have buy the D point patterns that are in play. We have that same pattern, same set of patterns are going on inside of Apple. In fact, let me just change screens here momentarily. We'll come back to the white background screens. The reason I mentioned Apple is because we it was a request inside the Tiger's Den from InnoVisual. So let's go take a look at the Apple charts. What I'm referring to here, 
We'll just expand out the daily time frame so we're all looking at the exact same thing. Again, much like we did when we took a look at the ES, the NQ, the Dow, the Russell out here, your A point of the first A to B equals CD pattern is the high from August 17th. The B point is the low from August 24th. Let's get that B in there. There we go. And the C point is the high from August 26th. So you had a one to two A to B equals CD pattern uh, that uh, completed on Friday with that bullish hammer candle. Today, you've got a bullish engulfing. So we've got an A to B equals CD. Now, price also closed below. So the, I could also form another A to B equals CD. It looks like this. First of all, let's take a look at the volume. The volume on the trading day of the B point would be September the 8th. Volume there, 84 million shares. The close below was with uh, 90 million shares. So there is a confirmed A to B equals CD to downside. And then on Friday, it had 162 million shares. That kind of confirms that, but it was a bullish hammer candle. That means that low, just like we really looked at inside of the uh, ES, the NQ, um, really important for us to under, if that gets out, if that gets taken out, don't worry, I'll eventually get there. Um, I need a little bit of sleep after this uh, uh, four-day weekend out here, nonstop four-day weekend. In any event, uh, if there is a close below that hammer candle from Friday, that low out there is 148.37. Then with that suggesting to you and I, a move down to 140.79, 134.41, maybe even the 126.29 level. But you need that uh, confirmation. You need that uh, close below the low of that bullish hammer candle. So we'll just go back and take a look at the white background charts. I'm not sure if there's anything else there, but we're going to go take a look to see if we can provide that information to Inno if there is. Well, we can certainly take a look at the weekly time frame chart, which uh, price has been trading inside a descending price and trend channel out there. Those are identified by either the solid or dash blue lines. Price is consolidating with inside its monthly profile out there, so no reason you can't see lower price. So it's really going to be all about the daily time frame. Now, in the case of Apple, if this is just at the buy the D point pattern that uh, formed out here on Friday, confirming again today is in play, then a count, and this is just a counter trend move, then price is going to find resistance at one of two levels. The first would be 153.67. The second and more likely area would be at the 155.64 area. You can see that the oscillator and change line change colors. We've got a buy the D point pattern. Odds favor that we should see a bounce up into that oscillator and change line. Currently printed 156.65. So the range is the 155 to 156 level on any kind of bounce. But price first has to get above 154, if we would say. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here, just looking for signals, I'll just simply update this. Let me hit the update button. You've got a TD nine count pattern that is likely to form as long as Apple does not close below. 151.10 uh, as we get to the 12 noon hour. So now you could have a confirmed, uh, well, confirmed TD nine count top, small A to B equals CD top, sell the D point top. Both those would also then suggest from an Apple standpoint on a 30 minute time frame that we would see price pull back to support or the oscillator and change line. That's either 150.92 or 150.16. So by noon time, which says that by 12:30 you should have you will have a completed TD9 count top on a 30 minute time frame. This says prepare for prepare for some type of retracement at least back to support. No idea whether the support areas will hold or not. The other signal, okay, is that if the TD9 count fails, we're assuming right now that it will complete. If the if there if price is trading above the high of the pattern, the high of the pattern does not take place until 12:30. If price is trading above the high, or the confirmation of the high cannot take place until then. So whatever that high is, bars eight, nine, the bar following nine, if price closes above that, then it tells you we have a strong momentum move to the upside in the case of Apple. That would then obviously bleed over into the Qs or the NQ out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame charts, which suggest a counter trend move, either 153 or 155. And on a short term basis, it says prepare for a potential retracement that begins by 1230 if it has not already begun. So I hope that helps uh, you out. Who was the you? The Ute, that was Inno Visual who wanted to take a look at Apple. McGuppy wants to take a look at uh, GSM. So let's get those uh, screens fired up here and read the question. It says, happy Monday. You're now on GSM, please. It appears to be breaking below the lows from two weeks ago. Where do you see it headed? I own a small position and I'm considering closing that position. Okay, so let's do a really good analysis here. Not that we do bad analysis. This has a nice TD9 count top, GSM that is, that formed on August the 16th. 
Looks like an A and B equals C D to the downside. That confirmed on the trade day of September 7th, much like the markets. Why did it confirm? Because it formed a bullish reversal candle, bullish engulfing. What does price then do? It rallies, finds resistance at the top of a new profile that forms. And by the way, there is a new profile. Nope, that is not. there's not a new profile that is forming. And on Friday, price closed below that. Now price is trying to take out the support of that bullish engulfing candle. I think that what you want to consider doing, McGuppy, is watching that price level of 677. You're at 632. If price closed above 677, you would not have a confirmed A to B equal C D to the downside for a GSM. Now, in order to get a confirmed pattern, what we like to use here is uh, you would want to see a close. But now and this is what you don't want to see, but this is what you're watching for. If you did get a close below that 639 level, the September 7th low, which does uh, did 1.02 million shares. So if you do more than 1.02 million shares, you would have a confirmed A to B equals C D to downside. We'll switch charts in a moment and take a look at that to give you the proper price projection areas out there. So that is something to watch, and that would be supported by your, your consideration of closing that long position. If you get that confirmed sell the D point pattern, well, at least we'll show you where price is likely to head to, and then you make that decision. On a weekly basis, the only thing we have is a close below the oscillator and change line on Friday. Price consolidating, if you will, inside its uh, weekly profile. So the next move to the downside would be 580 or 514. Price right now is testing the support area on a monthly basis of its oscillator and change line. If price were to close below that, we'd be looking to move back to about the 507. So well, let's say this right now is uh, mostly about the daily. Let me, before we switch screens out here, let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart. We can see price moving lower, doing less relative energy, no bullish reversal candle, price being deflected by that oscillator and change line. So there's certainly no buy signal here, something we'd like to see in order to suggest that, okay, maybe you should not get us in the position. We don't have that as of 1137. So now let's go switch to the black background charts. Easier for Stevie to write a uh, put together the A to B equals CD pattern. So we'll change that. We'll expand that chart out. So they're all looking at the exact same thing. And the A to B or potential A to B equals CD pattern. We won't know until today. The price is trading below that B point. The A point out here is the trading day of August 16th. There we go. The B point, that bullish engulfing from September the 7th. The C point is the uh, trading high in September 14th. Now, this does about a 0.786 with 73.9% to the downside. So it closed below that low of September 7th with more than 1 million shares. It's going to generate an A to B equal city. See how price along the strong side here? Guppy, that would suggest more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D. One to one is six point oh five. One to one point two seven two five seventy. One to one point six one eight is five and a quarter out there. So I do hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol GSM. That's Faro Globe PLC. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right. Back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow is down 68, S&P is off 12, NASDAQ is down 49. No requesting at the moment, so I'm going to tell you a fishing story. As you know, I wasn't here on uh, Thursday and Friday. I was up in Nantucket. Uh, one of my best friends, our best friends, have a, a place up there, and four couples, we get together up there each year. Typically, we wait till after uh, September till the crowds sort of thin out. So the guys are all golfers, and, and uh, three of us are, are fishers. And uh, so, great golf. We finished our round of golf, teed off pretty early, around 9 o'clock or so. Finished walking the course around 1, 1.30. Had a quick beer, quick lunch. Got in touch with the girls. They were busy until about, like, 3.30 or 4. So, we're, like, uh, we're driving back uh, uh, to uh, to Kevin's house from the, uh, from the golf course. Beautiful day out there. I mean, those of you that live up in the northeast, uh, I mean, just 72 degrees, clear skies, no clouds around. So we're passing by the marina, and Kevin says, hey, let's just let's let's grab a couple beers. Let's hop on the boat, and uh, let's just see what's going on. So we, hop, we do that, hop on the boat. We had a couple hours to kill. Those of you familiar with the area, you all know where the Great Great Point uh, uh, Beach is, Lighthouse. So we're on the boat. It's, it's beautiful as can be. We start heading out that way. Well, we're out there. All of a sudden, off in the distance, we see a couple of fish jumping. Now, we really weren't prepared. We really weren't intending on going fishing, but, you know, we did have a couple of rods uh, with us. So we go ahead and put a couple of, uh, of uh, lures on there. <clears throat> First cast, boom, throw it out there. The, uh, uh, the uh, lure hits the, uh, hits the water, and literally on the first crank, Boom, get hit by something pretty big. No idea what it is out there. Turns out we, we, we bring it in. Nice big old Benito. Now, at this stage here, I mean, really nice uh, size. And uh, so we said, okay, well, now we know what we're going to have. We're going to have some sashimi with our uh, beers out here. Bring that in. Uh, stick it in the cooler. Throw the line out again. On the second or third, re you know, just uh, winding the, uh, uh, the reel out there. Boom. Another hit. This is the second. This is the second. Just sec, throwing the second cast out there. Get hit again. Feels like an even bigger uh, fish out there. And sure enough, bring that in. Another bonito. Now, it was big enough. We really weren't. Uh, we already had plans for dinner uh, for the next uh, couple of nights. So we said, now, let's just go ahead and throw it back in, which we do. We release it. We only want to catch and keep what it is that we're going to eat. Throw it back in. I, this is a true story. Throw in the next cast out there. Boom! Get hit again. Not even bigger. Uh, just so you can tell, just simply from the attention out there. Bring it in. Now all of a sudden we pull in this big bluefish, which we definitely were not going to eat. The bluefish out there. So we throw that back in. Fourth reel. Throw it out. We cast it out there. Get skunked. Okay. And hey, listen, folks, I've been fishing for a long time, ever since I was in diapers out there. I've never seen that. Well, we got skunked on the fourth cast, the fifth cast, back to catching fish. We caught like eight or nine fish in less than an hour. It was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced, I've ever seen. None of us could believe it. 
so yesterday after our, not yesterday it was on Saturday after our round of golf um, the girls we wanted to they wanted to go play croquet which is which is actually it's a pretty fun thing to do and uh, we, we we convinced them to hey let's just stop on the boat let's just have a beer let's go out there we didn't go all the way out past a great point this time because we knew we would have ended up with divorces and stuff like that but um, it was it was the most amazing fishing experience uh, I, I've, I've ever seen. We told a couple of guys about it, and they went out there, and uh, we saw we saw one group that came. And we happened to see them at dinner, and they said they got skunked. So, um, uh, anyways, a very cool experience. In any event, uh, so that's enough of Stevie's fishing experience. No, John, there are no stripers out there, at least where we were, at least where we were at at the uh, moment. So we do have a new request that has come in. Thank you, Michael. This is Michael P. Michael wants to take a look at uh, Moderna, ticker symbol there, MRNA. Says, Stevie son, went short Moderna today. Where do you see a first target to the downside? 115? Uh, so if we take a look at the charts up here on the screen, let's go to the white background charts and answer that question. I think it's pretty simple as far as where it is that you're looking at. And what I'm looking for here, Michael, I'm looking at really the monthly chart. The monthly chart shows a TD nine count bottom that formed the month of June. We're inside those June lows. That low is 115.61. You went short. We're at 125.11. As a look at the daily time frame chart, doesn't should suggest any bottom signal. You are in wave number F. Uh, so you could get to wave number G, but that couldn't take place for another couple days at a minimum. So 115 is the likely price target. That also is the low of a uh, of a buy the D. Well, I don't know if there's a buy the D point pattern there or not. Let me see. Yeah, there's certainly a buy the D point pattern. The low I'd be looking at is the May 13th low as well, or really the uh, low from no, the June 17th low. That's the 115.61. So it looks to me like that and price is trading with inside that weekly. So it's just this weekly bottom of its profile that is really kind of your thorn in the side. That's 125.88. And you're at 125.35. So ideally, Mike, is price continues to close below that uh, bottom. That, that's a bullish structured weekly profile. So that is where you could find some support. In fact, ever since that profile has been in place, you have found support there. So you're really looking for a close below that level. Again, that's 125.88. If that holds, then we really have just a consolidation sideways, and that's your support area. If that area fails, then price should go target that June 17th low, that June 17th low, 115.61. Now, what I want to do is go back on my other set of charts here, go to that June low on the daily time frame. I just want to see what the volume on a daily basis is at that June low. Turns out it's June 13th is the actual low, and that had volume of 6.7 million shares. You are trading this, you're not, I'm going to switch to the screens here so Michael can see this, so you can see it as well out here, because this is what really Michael needs to be paying attention to, or at least in my opinion, it's what Michael needs to be atten pay attention to. We'll put a, uh, we'll wrap this with a uh, couple of yellow horizontal lines so we can take a look at the uh, high and low of that candle session. So the high of that candle session is 124.78. The low so far today is 124.58. The volume on the, in the bottom of that, that's that 115.61 area. So the volume on that candle session, 6.7. You're pushing into it right now with 5.3 million shares. So you really would love to see a close below 124.78. What happens if you get a test and rejection of a swing point with volume? Well, typically, Mike, what it tells us is you'll be back down there. But down there at this stage here on the test and rejection is the top of the swing point. So that just says you get back to 124.78, not that you're going to blow through it. But if you did close below 124.78, you would close inside that swing point with volume. That then suggests at least a test of 115.61. And if you take that level out, well, you can see Moderna, which traded up at $500 not that long ago. You could see this down at the 13.53 level. That's what the long-term chart for the monthly time frame shows us. That is not the signal as we speak just yet. But if you do close below that one, uh, one uh, fifteen sixty one level, that may in fact be the signal. So, Michael, I hope that that helps you out with uh, Moderna. I won't read those other comments because they get just a, they poke the tender underbelly of uh, probably fifty percent of the people that are listening out there. But uh, but I hear you. So uh, thanks so much for the uh, request. And uh, uh, well, we're going to a breakout here. We come back. I'll try to figure out. It looks like there might be one more question that uh, we'll take, let's see, from Sat P. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol OKTA. So we get back from this breakout here, we'll take a look at OKTA.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got a couple of questions out here. The uh, first one is uh, well, let's go switch screens and take a look at OKTA. That was from Sat P inside our Tigers. And his question is Is it a buy now? The answer is no. If we take a look at uh, OKTA, you can see it has triggered today. It's triggering a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. The first thing you'd want to see at a minimum out here is a confirmed bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. The second thing you need to see is a close above the oscillator and change line. That's currently at about the bottom of its profile, around 61.79. If you got that, then you would at least get a signal that suggests a rally up to the 72.78 level. We have a, uh, con you had a confirmed by the D point or Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on a weekly time frame chart, but that failed last week. That suggests lower price. The monthly chart right now, Sat, is, is suggesting to you and I that price is going to go target 4188 to 2513. Now you're at 5840. Maybe you get a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. I don't know if we do, but the answer to your question is no, we do not have any kind of buy signal in ticker symbol OKTA as we speak. The next request is from uh, inside the Tiger's Den as well. This was to take a look at ticker symbol HUT. That is a uh, crypto mining company out here. So uh, not Pizza Hut, but this is a different kind of hut. And right now we can see that price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's a bullish structured daily profile, which runs from 179 to uh, the 217 level. The center of that profile is at 188. You're trading out at 188. So it's trading right now into buyers. The zone of buyers is 179 to 188. Whoops, what else do we have here? Not much that I can see. 
Uh, you also are trading into the support level of its weekly profile. And both the support of its, uh, or it's at 175, both the center and bottom are at the same level. So 175, if you're looking for a place to buy, that could be an area, 175. Uh, you've got a TD Nike out bottom on the monthly time frame. So you just got, uh, you just trade with inside of profiles out here. I'd say the buy zone is between about 175 to 179. If that area fails, you're likely headed lower. Folks, thanks so much for joining us here. Stay tuned for great programming. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Please, everybody, have a magical, magnificent Monday. Take care now.